So welcome back friends. This is going to be part one of a video series that will unroll over the next few months and that is going to be putting together a completely off-grid adventure van. So the van that we decided on is a 2017 Ford Transit three quarter ton with the twin turbo 3.5 liter engine. Now it was really only down to two choices. It was either the Sprinter cargo or it was the Ford Transit cargo. And there was a, either one, they're both wonderful vehicles, but it really came down to the Ford for price. We were not gonna buy a brand new van, uh, but with the incentives and some help from one of my subscribers, who was an employee of, Flor of Ford, Jack, thank you. Jack was able to, uh, to extend to us uh, his uh, employee pricing and then with all the incentives for being a first responder and having a car that was not Ford and the end of year it, it was actually for us it was almost the same price to buy a brand new than something from 2015 with um, 30 40,000 miles on it so it just didn't make any sense so that's the reason why we went with new it was just uh, it was um, it was just too good of a deal so when we were shopping for the Transit, there was a couple things that were really important to me to have. One was the tall roof. These come in three different roof heights, and the tallest one is six foot nine to the inside. So I can even go in there with my boots on and a cowboy hat and have plenty of clearance. We can stand up in it. The second thing that I wanted was a limited slip rear axle because four wheel drive is not a factory option on these. Quigley in Pennsylvania does put it on. It's about a twelve, thirteen thousand dollar upgrade. Um, and it's something that I'm hoping we're not going to need. With a good set of Michelin winter tires and a limited slipper axle and the traction control on it, I think we're going to be okay. If it becomes a problem and it's, we're really having trouble difficulties getting up to the mountain in winter and snow, we can you know, always look at that upgrade down the road. The other thing is I wanted the big engine. I wanted the 3.5 liter twin turbo EcoBoost. It's got 400 foot pounds of torque and it is a fabulous, fabulous engine. We I drive this home, it just railed like a sports car. The suspension on it is really good. It's not tippy, it doesn't dive. It feels very, it's very confidence inspiring. Even driving through an area that we, when we were coming home to, to, or yesterday that has real high wind and passing semis and stuff on the interstate, I didn't feel uh, out of control. I didn't feel like it was swaying back and forth. It really is well put together. The other thing that I re was really important for us to have was the side window on the door and then the rear, rear windows with the defrosters. There's not a lot of options on these, but those few things for, for me were really important for the environment that we work in or that we live in. So these transits come configured a couple ways. This is the cargo configuration, meaning you just basically, it's just a blank slate. When we picked it up, all it had in here is two seats. It didn't even have this rubber mat. I was really fortunate. I jumped on Craigslist and there was a guy on the way to the dealership uh, that had the mat for sale, sale that he'd pulled out of his. It was a brand new factory mat and I was able to get that for really cheap uh, and put that in. So of course we have the big doors that will open. They'll hyper extend and they'll open all the way out and they'll stick on the magnets. But to, just to kind of show you um, the layout and the configuration, what we're going to do uh, is all this stuff is gonna change. But what we have to do is we have to be able to, to, to seat four people. That's, that's my, uh, this is my spec sheet here, safely with factory seats, factory seat belts, no motorhome nonsense. I mean, properly done, where if you were to get in an accident, you're not gonna have stuff flying around and also to sleep for people comfortably as well. So what we're going to do, and this may change, is we're gonna have, we'll have a full queen bed here. Fortunately, this is wide enough where I can get six foot six to the outsides. I'm six foot three, so it gives me plenty of room, so we're able to sleep this way. So a full queen bed is only gonna be five foot deep, and we can have a queen bed right across here for Mrs. W and I, and then we can have fold down bunk bed here, or even another, a twin or a full bed up there for kids that they can get into and we'll still have plenty of headroom. So we'll be doing a cantilevered full free spanning bed here and then utility things in the back, you know, maybe water tanks, um, batteries, we'll have an outside shower with a pump and all of that there. Um, so that will pretty much take care of the rear of the van. So for seating for everyone, the, there's a car, there's a, uh, a passenger version of this that has a 15 passenger seat configuration. And in those 15 seats, they have one of them is a, a little, it's a two person seat. It's a little bench seat 
that's got the seat belts and everything all figured in. It should, it, they'll have all the same upholstery here, so it'll be a, a factory option with the factory bases that can snap in or snap out. So what my plan is now is to put this bench seat right here behind. So this is gonna take up about 36 inches. So we'll have Jack right here, and if he has a friend or another person, we'll be able to seat them and still have plenty of room to come in here. We're also, or we'll cut all of this out here, here, excuse me, and put in a full big window that will open because so he can see out and we can have get some ventilation in there as well. So that, yeah, that takes care of the seating. So also for the captain's chairs up here, I'll put both of these on a swivel. So these will be able to swivel around to the back and to face this bench seat. Mrs. W will be here, I'm here. And then we'll either, we'll have some sort of a small table right here. So this will basically be the living area. So when we park to camp, we can swivel these chairs around and then Jack's bench will be right here that we'll seat two. And then we'll have room for maybe, I don't know if it'll mount on the sidewall there, but a small table that'll flip up, maybe one of the post drop-in tables that stores somewhere. And so we can all sit together and eat together. We could uh, play cards or games or just remove the table and have just essentially a little living area. It's a pretty good use of space. And I think we should have plenty of room there um, for all of that stuff. So the galley or the small kitchen has not been nailed down, but as we're thinking right now, it will probably be right here. So there be room with the queen bed to have a 36 inch galley here. And we'll, we'll have a small sink in there. We'll have a small uh, propane burner and then we'll have, uh, so we'll, we'll have water be able to cook and such. And then, a, and then a, a refrigerator that will go in there as well. Probably do kind of a, a flip up extender so we can get another foot or 16 inches of countertop. So Mrs. W, when she's prepping and cooking, she has plenty of room, uh, but then we can close it up uh, and not, not get a, have a problem with the walkway. So Ford really has a, done a nice job designing this uh, the cab. It, it's so wonderful to drive. It just drives like a car. You don't realize you're driving uh, such a large, v, v, large vehicle. Uh, very comfortable. The seats are excellent. Uh, this one's got a, a backup camera that was also a must have for us. So we can see there in the center is a backup camera. Um, it's got sync on it so we can uh, Bluetooth all of our phones and listen to our audiobooks when we travel. That was another thing that we really wanted cruise and air conditioning and all that. So there's just, there's not a whole lot of stuff, a center console, but look at all of the storage. Everywhere you look, there's a cubby hole or a cup holder or something. And even up here, you have this uh, kind of a shelf there where you can stow things, gloves and goggles and, you know, bike shoes, whatever you're doing. Uh, it's well laid out. It's very nice to drive. It just drives just wonderfully, just, just like, a, like a car. It doesn't feel any different than driving a minivan. So let's take a look at this beautiful engine. Oh, this is a great engine. 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 uh, engine. 400 foot pounds of torque, I think I mentioned that. I know it's not a V8, and us Americans, it's really hard for us to drive a vehicle that doesn't have a V8 in it. It's just kind of the way we were made, but the twin, the turbos do help. There's definitely bring a uh, element of coolness to that, but uh, great, great power in this thing. And it's gonna be really important to have when we get it loaded down with the conversion, you know, water tanks and cabinets and beds and all of that, you know, it's going to bring this thing in excess of probably 10, 11, maybe 12,000 pounds living in the mountains. Having a, a powerful engine is going to be, um, it's going to be a, really a, a, an added benefit. Putting together an adventure van like this is, it really is life changing. This is our third one. Our first one was a, a beater that I bought wrecked. It was, I think I paid like $1,200 for it. <laughs> Somebody had ran into the side and the whole thing was caved in whatever wherever we went anywhere with it you know people would like drive by and point it just it looked really bad but that's what we could afford at the time and we put a bed in it did the best we could bought another one with a with a couple hundred thousand miles on it and we put the refrigerator and bed on that you know we've just slowly upgraded and here we are on a third one and now we have um um, a new van that's a blank canvas that we can, you know, really, really tailor to the way we like it. You don't, it's, it's not about having a brand new one. You can do the same thing with a, with a, an old Sprinter van or an old Econoline. But the reason why we, this is so important to us and why we've always had one is that um, having a van like this will change your life in that, you know, you come home Friday night, you know, you want to take your family or your kids or wife or girlfriend out to the lake or to the river and go canoeing or fishing. But the thought of, getting everything out of storage and putting it in the car and not having enough room and forgetting stuff. It's, it becomes so much of an obstacle that you end up not doing it. This is where the adventure van comes in. You leave it stocked. 
Your adventure van is, is essentially a rolling toolbox, a rolling toy box of all your things. You've got your extra flip-flops in there and your shorts and your sunscreen and you've got canned goods and you've got your bedding and you've got your canoe and everything is ready to go. So when Friday night comes uh, and you want to, you think you'd like to head out to the lake, it's just a matter of jumping in the van and maybe stopping at the gas station or stopping by the grocery store and, and getting a few things that you need for breakfast and lunch and throw it in the refrigerator and, and off you go. And the reason why I think that that's so important is that we are so connected to our to internet and to our homes. And, and if you have a, a life like mine where there's a million unfinished projects, even when that weekend rolls around, it's hard to, it's hard to relax because you have everything calling to you. It's, it's, you have all these roaring lions screaming for your attention. And then you, there's, they're ever present. There's always the internet. You know, that's always a big draw. And man, when I think about how much time I spend on that, that I could be out fishing. I could be out at the lake or we could be out going on a hike or doing something. Um, it makes me, it makes me kind of sad. So Mrs. W and I kind of see ourselves going in that direction and in more and more time on the internet, like this is important. This is important enough to redirect the family's resources to put this in place. We have only have a few more years left with Jack. So get away from those things and then it's easy, you know, it's easy to relax and it's even if you just go an hour away or a half hour away where you can't get cell service or signal, um, it frees you up and you can focus on family and you can focus on what's real instead of everything that's virtual. So for us, it's, it's really has been a real blessing and it's really important and we're just grateful uh, that we're able to, to, to do this and I look forward to sharing the build with you. So just a few more things uh, that we're going to be putting in. Of course, we'll be uh, putting um, some sort of a rack system on top uh, with a solar uh, array, um, some deep cycle batteries, uh, probably a two KW or two, two, was it kilowatts, kilowatts, 2000, 2000 inverter refrigerator the you know it's not going to be i'm not into elaborate upholstered super fancy vans you know you can put these together on a shoestring most of the things all that i uh, that i've got for the last ones have been on craigslist the refrigerator we got some cabinets at ikea we retrofitted them it, it, it's not it's nothing that you guys can't do and i'm going to kind of reflect that this is not a high end going to be a high end deal it's going to be very practical utilitarian somewhat and 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 a, a reachable cuz buying something like this that's got um, a full conversion on it. And these areas, you know, let's say you add four wheel drive to it, you know, you're talking $150,000 for something like that. And it's just, that's just so far out of our realm. But this, uh, that, that we can put together ourselves and, and source some things locally, it shouldn't be, uh, it shouldn't be even a fraction of that. So well, I look forward to the build and um, I guess that's it. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video. Mm -hmm.